more on AEW stuff. I guess I'll just recap for here at the moment. Check my notes. Just got full gear stuff out of the way. I don't listen much about and Bert Baker. I didn't say anything about Bert Baker and Bear Priest is what I was talking about now. It started off very sloppy, unfortunately. Um it was very green. But she started doing the Adam Cole moves, that was pretty good. Um they're trying to do the dentist stuff. I don't think it was sold or performed that well. Um but it could be good. Yeah, Priestley has some kicks, but I don't know. It was a very sloppy match. They might have done like a WoW or Shimmer match earlier. With the Young Bucks match, I was saying that I didn't like how they were losing before because, like, they're the main draw of the tag team division and the company. But that match proved that they didn't need to win. Um, Kenobashi didn't win for like two years before becoming the biggest star. The, the, they have an opportunity to build up what the first one's going to be. Or it's like Paige, Adam Hamming, Paige, after losing the pop. Uh, after losing to Jericho, the world title. Kenny Omega was 6-4. Moxley was 4-2. And the match didn't count, so there's that controversy as well. One loss doesn't matter for that match anyway. It's according to standard memories. Street Fighter closes on the pre-show. Moxley uses CZW storyline. Hager and Jericho by themselves seems like a very interesting invader-ish storyline by itself. And then what happens at the end of the match, the main event, seems pretty interesting. They can do well with Moxley also. How WWE and WCW was, they could have just made a new world title. Sorry, how WWE was post WCW, they could just make a new world title in AEW and give Cody another chance at a world title. There was stuff like the judges being there, MJF being there. I thought with the judges there, MJF wasn't going to screw up the match. They were just going to do a judge screw job or something. But instead, they went with MJF and the, throwing in the towel. And like... When he threw in the towel, he didn't have to screw him over. But like they could have, they could have milked up like, oh, is he is he really doing it on purpose or stuff? But they didn't do that at all, which is a shame. And I have a concern about Jericho. Like Santa Marys doesn't think that Jericho Jericho's loses the title, the new four belts, the US or TV title, the Dynamite title, the Wednesday night title, etc. Like Jericho's not going to lose the title anymore, anytime soon and they have a huge roster so they need someone else with a title. Well it sells more belts, it sells more merchandise. I didn't think Jericho should lose the title, I don't think anyone did, I mean Cody did a good debate with his promo, that he should deserve it. I don't know who Cody would have faced after, 
Yeah, MJF will win after him for the title then. Jericho. Jericho's too quotable. I'm really looking forward to Dynamite where he goes like, "Does the young? I'm the youngest, longest reigning AEW champion of all time." I don't know why I didn't have a voice for that, but a champion. Um, I can't really do a Jericho impersonation. I guess. Can anyone do a Jericho impersonation? I don't know. He has a pretty unique voice. So my WCW fan was wondering why is everyone praising JR after not watching wrestling after 20 years? I was wondering if he hated JR because he was a WCW fan, but he just thought it was weird. He's a well respected announcer, so he gets applauded. But he made the point that he was on JR's on Dynamite every week. What's so special about him being on pay-per-view? This has been stuff that happening at live events also. He thought it was totally unnecessary from the fans and kind of embarrassing. Caliber is really doing well as a commentator. I think he talked a little bit about the tag team match. Um, Caliber is really doing good as a commentator. If they get rid of Jim Ross and the other guy, uh, Tony Schiavone. I wondered if it was pretty good. Like, again, what I said with the Young Bucks. It didn't matter if they lost match as long as they had a Young Bucks ish match. They did, and they made LAX look really good. They made themselves look really good. They have this kind of kabashi opportunity. And then they had the post match beat down to make up that the facts that the young bucks lost the match. So, someone's wondering if they're going to reset the match, the records after every year, like, uh, I was wondering if they're going to re reset the matches, he was wondering if they're going to reset the matches every once in a while, and I was like, maybe every year, like, NBA seasons or something, TNT, there you go. My reaction to Adam Page winning was like, Fuck that streak, fuck you, Pack. Uh, it was amazing that Paige got the win. That was a well deserved win. Once when I recap the replay, goes for the black arrow, misses, and they're like, oh shoot, that's the spot where, where Paige can get the win over Pac, who's never lost a singles match. And like the referee's like banging on. The ground went hard when he hits the floor. See, I don't, I don't even remember how, how Paige just like knocked down the situation. Let me see. He teased the buckshot Larry twice. Uh, one time he kicks him in the face with a super kick, and then he no sells it. Rams into runs into him. Uh, Pac dodges before going for a German suplex. Then goes off the top ropes, and then at Paige, they just added to Dara. It his a. Uh, Stand up, uh, standing straight up, Tiger Bomb. Adam Page is up again. Goes for the finisher, the dead shot. I think he cowers in the submission, let me see. He even starts this up too much, yeah. The, the brutalizer. We're probably going to figure out who was the, who was the main event, who's the good guy back in this. And Page was a member of the elite, but he didn't come out with the elite, so he didn't know that. And uh, Pac sort of has this weird hair. Pac was down on the floor. I wonder if it was like a Sonata thing where it was like, oh, you, this guy really loses a match, so like, and then Adam Page is like this up and comer like Sonata, so yeah, that scenario going on. Page has the ropes. This is a new commentary here, because it. I don't know if they'll fast forward this freaking four hour pay per view while skipping a part of the match. 
Adam Page saw it pretty well, like, Pac moves him look crazy. I don't know if he's speaking, like, when he's setting up the Black Arrow. Like, he had him in a perfect position to do the buckshot area because he's so close to the ropes. I don't know if... I don't know, would he have been... If he was far away from the ropes, would that have been better for the buckshot area? But, like... Page has a look on his face. Like, oh, I gotta hit it, I gotta hit it. I gotta hit the win over Pac. Ducks. Does a buckshot. Goes... They both exchange the Irish... German suplex holds. And then... You think he's gonna go for the, the low blow in Zagiri, but then discus forearm, discus, lari discus lariat, then Adam Page is back up again. The crowd's up on the feet, they're cheering, then he says up for the dead shot. Then he gets the win. Amazing. Thank you very much, Adam Page, and thank you, Pac, for allowing him the win and the ref going. Bleh. And then. Right. Did he not? Do the pin? Let me see. No, he won. <laughs> Worth thoughts like I'm a scribe. Uh, carry on with the match later. Worth thoughts like I'm a scribe.